he's chosen turbot topped with cured local venison ham, accompanied by rich brown shrimp and longoustine dumplings with both fennel confit and puree. Well, turbot turbot then, then? is a very robust fish that can cope with meat and it doesn't lose its flavour. There's not really nothing really unusual about turbot, is there? There's, there's no. like restaurants up and down the country using turbot, but there's not many using ling. In fact, I can't name one using ling apart from mine. You're the only person using ling. But turbot is on like virtually every menu, even on pubs up and down the country. Mind you, he doesn't know that the judges think there's a good reason why people don't use ling. Across the counter, Elisha's using tomato ketchup to spice up his turbot sauce. Predictably, Chris is absolutely appalled. Only place for that. But Elisha's too busy plating up to notice. First on is the fennel puree, followed by the confit. He then carefully places the turbot and venison ham, the dumplings, and finally, his special turbot sauce. Bring it up to them, like that to them, OK? I'm really, really excited. Thank you. Happy? I'm, oh, I'm excited. Yes, come on! So Elisha's obviously very pleased with this dish. Let's see what the judges think. I can't be honest with you. I'm, I'm looking at this dish and it's making me depressed. I don't think it's much of a look at this dish. Mm, Actually, it's it quite nice. It tastes lovely. It does taste mm. good. Underneath the hammy crust or whatever it is, mm -hmm. there's um, red lemon or something. It's delicious. I think that meat and fish combination works well. I think the fish is well cooked. The puree. The seafood and the fennel are very nice together. I think, actually, the only element I think there's too much of is the little prawn balls. So because I just think that... I mean, they're OK, but I just don't think they, they, they fit with the dish. I actually think if we just had these balls as a dish, I'd be quite happy. Say, four of those on a, on a bed of that sauce. I mean, I would have thought that was a thoroughly modern affair. I, I mean, sure sorry. I cannot believe what I'm hearing. The one thing I think that doesn't work are these wretched balls, which are, you know, they're sort of fishy gobstoppers. Mm, very nice too. Well, I, I think this dish could be seen at the Gherkin if it had some more balls. I think actually this dish could be seen at the Gherkin if it had no balls at all. <laughs> so Elisha did well there. They only disagreed about what was the best bit. Two courses down, but there are still two more for Matthew and Oliver to disagree about. I think you're being very unkind. You're right, I am being unkind because I'm expecting more. And the judges face the difficult choice of who will represent the Southwest region in the final. Well, it's now the main course, the big one, and a real chance to get ahead in the battle to go through to the Gherkin. Chris is going first once again. He's cooking rabbit and accompanying it with carrot puree, summer vegetables, watercress, and a scattering of pea and coriander microherbs. It's all quite clearly see, I think. But I live in the countryside, like yourself. Yeah. I'm inspired by the countryside and everything I see in it. And things like the pigeon dish I started with, the rabbit dish, I think you can quite clearly get the message. I don't live in the centre of a city, really, you know. He's chosen to serve his rabbit on a marble tile. And first on is a streak of red wine jus and carrot puree. Then the loin, followed by the stuffed shoulder. Next, a selection of vegetables. And finally, the rack, kidney, and a dressing of intense micro-herbs. Right, what we're going to do is we're going to just put the saucepan on the side there. This means when you put it down, obviously, if you tilt the plate, it's going to go everywhere. So you need to be very careful with this. This is a good test of your skill as a waiter. 